instead of eliminating them, I would limit your exposure to them. And let me tell you right now, it's hard to focus, especially in 2023. There are so many fucking distractions. It's all over the place. Just make sure you're reflecting on how certain people are contributing or not contributing to your life. Today's episode is for anyone who wants to level up. And this doesn't just mean level up in your business. This could mean level up in your relationship, in your relationship to yourself, or even just in life in general. I sat down and I wrote down all the tactics that I have used in my life to help me take things to the next level. And I want to just make a note before I get into this that I'm constantly looking where I can level up. This is something that's an ongoing journey. It's not just something where I leveled up once and like I'm good. I'm constantly searching for ways to take my life to the next level. And I think I've said this on here multiple times, but I just really want to be the best version of myself in all areas. And I don't want to compromise and be complacent. I'm someone who always likes to take it to the next level. So this episode's very fitting for me to go through. And I also want to say that I am not perfect at all these things. I try and, you know, I get it 80% of the time, but the other 20% I don't. So it's just constant edit and refining. The first thing I do is something called deep work. And I can't take credit for this. It's something that I read about in a book actually called deep work. So I separate like busy work and regular work from deep work. Deep work is something that I think about from a really thoughtful perspective. So the other day I told Katie, my assistant, who you've heard on this podcast, that I needed a session with Weston, who's my business partner, and I needed nine hours. Okay. So I needed to go through the whole entire infrastructure of my company and just look at the systems, our goals, our goals for next year, and go over everything from a really high level. And what I sort of explained was, I'm looking at the picture super close. I need to zoom out and look at it in landscape mode. Okay, so I need to step back away from the picture. And this is where the deep work comes in. So I had Katie schedule us nine hours on a Friday. And I set my day up in a way that was strategic. So I did a workout and a cold plunge in the morning to like get my energy up. I spent time with my kids super early in the morning so I could have breakfast with them and take a walk. And then I did a cold plunge and then I did a workout. So I sort of was like training myself to get ready for this nine hour brainstorm. Then I had a big coffee and we went somewhere that was not the office and not my house. And the reason that you, I personally think that you don't want to do deep work in an office is because there's lots of distractions, which is fine. That's part of like office culture. But to actually do a deep brainstorm in office with all the different distractions can take you out of what you're doing. So we went to like this super cute little cafe that's by my house and it has this room and we sort of like took over this room. And I turned off my phone, like off, not even airplane mode, turned it off and put it away. Weston did the same. And we sat down with an empty piece of paper and my favorite pen, which is on the Skinny Confidential. And we just went over every little detail when it came to the company as a whole. We went through where we wanted to be in four years, where we wanted to be in one year, where we want to be in three months. We wrote out the whole entire team and what the flow was of that. And we really got granular with everything. And we worked for hours and hours and hours on just building out the brand. And I think sometimes people forget about the deep work. They're so involved in the everyday hustle or the formulas or even social media, like posting Instagram stories and on TikTok and on Instagram, that they forget to step away from the photo and look at it in a landscape mode picture. Okay. So Deep work, I think, should not be done at home. It should not be done at an office. It should be somewhere that you have complete peace and clarity. It should also be somewhere that you can turn off your phone, that you can focus with a piece of paper and a pen 
I personally like doing it either alone or with one other person. And you focus on one task at a time. That has been super helpful for me to build my business. It's such a pillar. So if you're trying to level up in any area of your life, even if it's like your relationship, maybe you want to renegotiate your relationship. I would sit down by yourself or with your partner and have no distraction and no interruption. And let me tell you right now, it's hard to focus, especially in 2023. There are so many fucking distractions. It's all over the place. So you actually have to be incredibly thought out on how you are not going to let things distract you. And that's where deep work comes in. So schedule this like an appointment on your calendar. If you need someone to hold you accountable, bring a partner. If you can do it alone, great. I try to do this probably three times a month and I do different deep work sessions. So Fridays was all about the business. I usually have a deep work session with writing. So I'll have uh, probably a couple hours where I'm sitting down a week and just focusing on writing. I also use deep work in my personal life through meditation. So I'll do really long meditations and go into the meditation sort of having like a problem that I want to solve. So deep work can look like a lot of different things. And I want to tell everyone that it's usually not on your phone. It's off electronics. I wouldn't even bring a computer, to be honest. I think that that can be distracting too. Like the beeps and the chimes and all that shit. It's just like put all the electronics away and focus on the task at hand. So that is my number one tip for leveling up deep work. The next thing that you can do to level up in your life is to put boundaries around the content you're consuming. This is so important because like we said in tip number one, If you don't put boundaries around the content you're consuming, it's never ending. You could literally scroll TikTok and Instagram all day long. I have a friend, my trainer, Brent, and he told me that he only goes on TikTok when he's on the Stairmaster. And I thought about this and I thought this is such a good idea because he's doing something that's productive, which is working out. And he's sort of giving himself a boundary around when he can consume TikTok. You could literally go on TikTok and knock it off for three hours. So for me, what I do is I try to not watch Instagram stories. I try not to even touch it. Like I don't even go there. I think just staying away from it is what's best for me because I don't want to get sucked into a hole. With TikTok, I will scroll it, but I'll give myself parameters. So I'll be like, okay, I'm going to go on this for 10 minutes and I'm going to look for 10 micro influencers who I can send product to. So I'll make, yes, like it's like I'm consuming content, but I'm also having a goal out of it. I really am thoughtful too about scrolling on Instagram. What I've done that's worked so well for me is I've taken 10 accounts that are super educational or inspiring and I've starred them. So you can add a star, like you can favorite an account on Instagram and they will pop up on your scroll page. I don't know what it's called, like your discovery page. And this is really helpful because now I know when I'm scrolling, at least I'm learning something. Another thing I do is I'll mute. I will mute all day long. I try to just keep social media not too noisy. So I'll just mute what I can mute. I have all the notifications on my phone turned off so I get no notifications. So what I've done is I've really set up my life to not be consuming content all the time. And I also mean text messages, right? Like for me, I am not someone who texts back right away. I just feel like it's counterproductive to building my business. And most of my business is on the phone. So to be responding right away to text messaging is super reactive. It's not proactive. So I try to return text messages when I'm on a walk, when I'm on the treadmill, Like wherever I can do it, where I can batch it, I just feel is more productive. And I think if you're noticing that you're constantly responding to text messages or you're scrolling the feed or you're getting sucked into TikTok, I would really sit down and think about strategy around content consumption. And that includes Instagram stories. If you're just like consuming Instagram stories and you're not getting any kind of value out of them, I feel like it's a waste of time. And when people ask me how I have time to read, I think a big part of that is that I'm not 
scrolling on social media all the time because I've set parameters around that. My favorite is when people ask me how I have time to read on Instagram. Like they'll message me and they'll say, how do you have time to read? And I'll respond back because I'm not looking at people's stories. I'm not constantly on Instagram. If you limit your consumption, you will have more time to read. You'll also have more time to build and work on what you want to work on. You'll be more present. Listen, I get it. It's really easy to get sucked in. We've all been there. But I think just looking forward and having a plan when it comes to content consumption is so important for leveling up. The next leveling up strategy is you can't be a forever student. If you are waiting to launch or you are waiting to put yourself out there or you're waiting to go post on Instagram because you feel like you need to get a degree or you need to read a specific book or you need to listen to a certain podcast, you're limiting yourself. The secret sauce is truly in the execution. I personally think it's more effective to execute, put yourself out there and adjust while you're learning. So I'm not saying don't be a forever student in general. I'm meaning don't be a forever student where you're only a student and you're allowing it to get in the way of your execution. And there's so many people, you know who I'm talking about, that you talk to and you say, oh my God, your idea is such an incredible idea. Why aren't you launching it? And they say, well, I need to get this degree or I need to get this certification or I need to get, you know, I need to hear this podcast. I'll never forget. I don't think I've told this story on here, but when I first launched The Skinny Confidential, I was teaching Pure Bar and I wanted to create a resource that had tips and tricks, obviously, like that everyone could consume that were about healthy habits. And the website launched. And I remember this woman. And it's so crazy because she was a really accomplished woman. And I looked up to her and she said to me, what certification do you have to launch this? Like, are, do you have a degree in health? And I said, no, I'm, I'm currently getting a certification and I'm working at Pure Bar and I'm just learning things along the way. And she said, I don't think that you should launch this without a degree literally told me that. If I had listened to her, who knows what would have happened. You can't listen to all these naysayers and have them project their limiting beliefs onto you. Like that's their own journey. That's not your problem. You got to forge forward. You got to execute. The certification, sure, if you need it, get it simultaneously. The podcast that you have to listen to, listen to it simultaneously. The book that you need to read, put yourself out there. I see so many people online making fun of people who are new to something. Like they'll make fun of micro influencers. And personally, I don't think there's anything to make fun of. I think it's absolutely incredible that someone is putting their talent out there. And I think even if you have 10 followers, like appeal to those 10 followers, they will go spread the word. If you create great content, the followers will come. Continue to put yourself out there and don't be a forever student. Be a student, but also be executing. My producer, Carson, just said that when he he sees when people put like music out there or a blog out there, people are making fun of them, like high school friends or college friends. You have to really put your blinders on and not give a fuck what anyone says. That's how you take it to the next level. The next secret sauce to leveling up is if you have toxic friends or family, and we all have one or two, and maybe they're not even toxic. Maybe they're just negative, or maybe they are in their own way, or maybe they are telling you why you can't do something, whatever it is. I don't think that you need to cut them out and be cutthroat about it because let's face it, some are in your family. Maybe some are like third cousins. I don't know. Most of you probably don't feel comfortable cutting them out. So what I would say is instead of eliminating them, I would limit your exposure to them. And this requires boundaries. And what I mean by that is you can say, I have a hard stop at this time. You can 
let's say you have lunch with them. You can say, I have to go to dinner after this. You can make sure that there's an end to the interaction. You can also hang out with them in a group. So it diffuses their energy. I think, again, being super thoughtful about who in your life is draining and who in your life gives you energy. So I always say when you wake up, there's two types of people. There's people that look in the mirror and there's people that look out the window. For me, I want to be around people who look out the window. Okay. It's how can you help other people? How can you build people up? How can you be more charismatic? I don't want to be around people that are constantly in the story. They're victimizing themselves. Everything sucks. Everything's negative. But there are people that I know that can be like that. And so what I do is instead of cutting them out and and just making it like this big drama is I'll just limit my interaction. So if we have to go to lunch with someone like that, I'll say, I have a meeting after this. And I really will schedule a meeting. I, I'm not lying about it. I'll just make sure that it's bookended by something. If I have to be around them for an extended period of time, I'll try to do it in a group of people. I, again, try to really think about how I want the interaction to go. And at the end of the day, if you're constantly giving people who are draining your energy time, the problem isn't them, it's you. And you have to take accountability for you allowing them to infiltrate your life. So I'm all about boundaries when it comes to people who are too negative or toxic, friends, family, coworkers, whatever it is, just make sure you're reflecting on how certain people are contributing or not contributing to your life. And how I do this is through meditation. Meditation has helped me so much. I've literally been able to have a daily strategy session with myself when it comes to my business, my relationships, my friendships. Being able to sit in silence for 15 to 30 minutes a day has been absolutely transformative because I've really had the time to sit and reflect about how I want my life to go and what I want my future to look like. People always say, oh, I can't sit in silence. I, I, I don't know what to do. I can't have a blank slate in my mind. I never have a blank slate in my mind when I'm meditating. I always am thinking about my future, future interactions, future business dealings, my kids, like whatever it is in the future and how I want to handle it and what the best way to do that is. So be thoughtful about who is in your life and know when to limit interaction. Another leveling up trick, you knew I was going to say this one though, is reading. Reading is such an easy, efficient, quick way to level up. I personally am a fan of reading 30 minutes to an hour a day. It's in my calendar. And the way I do it is I read off a Kindle. I have it on dark mode, get the Oasis so it doesn't hurt your eyes. And I have about three books I'm reading at a time. I switch. So like right now I'm reading something juicy like Andy Cohen's book, which is like really mindless, really funny, an easy read. And then I'm also reading Ryan Holiday's book called Discipline is Destiny. And it's all about having discipline in every single area of your life. So it's a little more of a thicker um, nonfiction kind of read. And then I'm reading Johnny Carson's book. And I don't know, I just like mix and match and like whatever I'm feeling, I'll read that night. But I always make it a point to read. And sometimes that means me getting in bed at eight o'clock and putting on my hatch, like my red light, getting the room totally calm. I'll put on chimes. I'll lay in bed. I'll eat a piece of cute chocolate, have my magnesium water, and I'll just chill. And I'll make my space really, really just a vibe to read. Like I, I love setting the atmosphere to what I'm doing. So if I'm at work, I have like a certain song or lighting or situation or like a desk setup that I have. But when I'm winding down and I'm about to go to bed and I'm reading, I have a setup for that too. And it's sort of like a habit stack. I know how to do all this very quickly and efficiently so I can sit and just read. I also read whenever I wake up in the middle of the night. I'll try to meditate for like five to 10 minutes. And if I still can't go to bed, I'll turn on my Kindle Oasis on dark mode and I'll just pick up from where I am. And then the other time that I read is if I wake up before my kids, which is rare. But when I do, like this morning, 
I woke up at six o'clock. They wake up at seven. I woke up at six. I read from six to 6.30 and then I got a meditation in, which was amazing, but does not happen every single day. So I just find pockets to read. If you are going to read, there is something that you have to do. And this brings me to my next tip. And that is book ending your day with no cell phone. Out of all these tips, if you take away one, do this one because it's the easiest tip that you can implement today. This has absolutely changed my life on every single level. I used to be someone who woke up in the morning and stared at their phone. I used to be someone who fell asleep reading a book on my phone. I used to read on my phone, which is just like out of control. So bad for your eyes. This is the old me. I was doing this in LA. My cortisol was through the roof. I changed my whole life moving to Austin. And one of the things that I did is I have non-negotiables about my cell phone. If you don't have non-negotiables about your cell phone, your cell phone will run you. I can tell you that. I've seen it with so many people. The cell phone ends up becoming this huge distraction. And in my opinion, it like we're going to go to rehab for it soon. It's like so crazy. You can really have this really unhealthy relationship with your phone. And I know it because I had it. I now in this stage of my business have gotten to a place where if I don't get off my phone and recharge, I will be burnt out. I will have way too much stress and I will constantly be in reaction mode. And I don't want to do that anymore. So in the last three years, I've completely changed my relationship with my cell phone. The way that I can read every single night is because my cell phone's not in the room. My cell phone goes outside, downstairs, sometimes upstairs in the bookcase, but it's not in my room. It's nowhere near my room. We also don't have a TV in our room. Our bedroom is for sleeping and fucking. (laughs) It's not for the cell phone. It's not for TV. So the cell phone to me There's like not even a charger for my cell phone in our room. At night, it goes downstairs at around 7.30 or 8. And that gives me the opportunity and opening to be able to read so much. So because I have set this habit that has just become a mindless habit, I don't even look at my cell phone. I don't need to look at my cell phone because I know at 7.30 or 8 that that's what we're doing. The cell phone's going away. Like, goodbye. I'm actually, to be honest, by this point, disgusted by it. I'm like, get it out of my face. I've had enough. So at eight o'clock, it's usually downstairs. It was last night. It's on the charger downstairs. I have my own little charger, my own little setup downstairs for it. I go upstairs and that's that. That's that's like, it's enough. I've had enough. Then in the morning, I don't wake up and grab my cell phone. If I want to do a meditation, I will usually go downstairs and do it away from my kids and Michael now. So I'll like lay on my little chi machine and just do it downstairs. And on my cell phone, I have a button that I click once and up pops the meditation. So I don't need to go scouring through the internet or text messages or emails. I just press a button and there's the meditation. So again, I still have not looked at my phone. So let's say I do a meditation. Then I get off So the phone's next to me. I do my meditation. I have to have a phone for a meditation. But the only reason that I've looked at it in the morning is to press the meditation button. If I'm not doing a meditation, I probably won't look at my phone until, I don't know, usually nine o'clock. The only reasons that I look at my phone in the morning is to turn on music on Sonos, is to listen to an Audible book or listen to a podcast that's like, inspiring or educating. Other than that, I do not want to look at my text messages until nine. The thing is, if you wake up and you pull your text messages up at seven o'clock in the morning, you are going to be constantly responding to other people's demands of you right away. In my opinion, it's a really poor way to start the day because you don't even have a fucking second to think. I just have found as someone who takes my business really seriously, that getting on the phone first thing is nothing but trouble. You're either going to scroll, you're going to go straight to your text messages, or even worse, in my opinion, emails. Don't even get me started on that. It's like you get deep in your emails. It's a nightmare. Also, it's so bad for your eyes. So what I do is I do my meditation. My kids wake up. I make them breakfast. I put towns in his stroller or Zaza and we go for a walk. I get some sunlight. 
I get them outside. Um, and or I will wake up, I'll make the kids breakfast. I will go and do a workout and get out of the house. And then after I have that peace of mind from a workout or maybe a cold plunge or a walk, I will then pick up my phone. Now, a lot of times I'll, I'm making the bed or I'm taking a walk by myself and I'll listen to something on Audible. But again, I'm still not looking at my phone. I'm just listening. I think that, again, this goes back to being thoughtful about when you're on your phone and making parameters around that. So really dissect after this episode when you are attached to your phone. And if you're going to tell me that you wake up first thing in the morning and scroll social media and then you go to bed scrolling social media and you're on your phone all day, most likely, or a computer, it's really hard on your eyes, on your cortisol, on your stress hormones. I just don't think that it's a recipe for leveling up. So monitor your phone. And a lot of people ask me this question. I want to just answer this as a side note. What do I do for an alarm? I usually wake up naturally at about 6.45, 7. But if I don't, I have a hatch. And it's incredible because it doesn't make any sound. And I don't know if this is like a feature on mine. It slowly wakes you up and it wakes you up by like a sunset. It like mocks a sunset. We also have like a setting on our blinds where our blinds open at seven, which is amazing. So it's like a slow wake up as opposed to a jarring wake up. I also think being woken up by an alarm every morning is just pure cortisol. It's not my vibe. So the hatch has been a really great investment. And then waking up with the sun when the blinds wake up is incredible. So that is how I wake up. I don't use an alarm clock or a traditional alarm. I don't use an alarm clock or a traditional alarm clock. I use the hatch and just natural light. You knew I was going to say this one too, exercise. If you want to level up and you want to take your life to the next level, you got to exercise. I don't care if you walk, lift weights, Melissa Wood Health, aloe moves, whatever you want to do, just pick something to move your body. And this is so important because when you do movement, you feel good. And when you feel good, you can execute more efficiently. So I'm someone who likes to have exercise every single day on my calendar. Sure, there's times that I don't hit that. But the point is, it's on there. And I try to get exercise in probably at least 90% of the time. It gives me clarity, energy, and it makes me feel good. And I think having your body in shape is the biggest flex there is. I mean, it's something that you really can't buy. I mean, I guess you could go buy a body with plastic surgery, but I also think just like it builds your confidence to show up in the gym every other day or every single day. And if you don't go to the gym every day, you can go outside and walk. It's free. You can walk during conference calls, You can walk while you're listening to a podcast. You can walk while you're listening to Audible. You can even walk while you're scrolling social media. But the point is move your body. I have yet to meet someone who is wildly successful. And I mean wildly successful that doesn't exercise. It's just every single successful person that I've ever interviewed, they exercise. And I don't think there's a right way or the wrong way. I just think it's about moving your body daily and showing up for yourself to build that confidence muscle and keep the promises to yourself. So for me, what I do is I look at my week. I talked about this in the episode about habits. I'll look at my week on Sunday and I'll put exercise on my calendar first in yellow. So that's the foundation of my week. I know I'm getting my exercise in. That's the most important thing because I want to show up healthy to my relationship, to my kids, to my work. It's really important to me to get my workout in. I have a trainer because it holds me accountable. And for me, when I go to the gym, I just sort of want to be told what to do. So that that has been something that's really helped me level up. But you don't need a trainer, right? Like I I love Melissa Wood Health. I love Aloe Moves. I love Pilates online. You can go on YouTube. Evlo Fitness is absolutely incredible. If you want to get more into weightlifting and muscle, she has a great program. I think we have to like a month free with Code Skinny. So if you're looking 
to level up in your life and you're not exercising, this is a really important part of the recipe. Next up, Ivy Lee method. This is so important and so easy to do. When I'm making breakfast for my kids every single morning, I do the Ivy Lee method. And what's so great is we have a planner on the Skinny Confidential called Can I Get a Fucking Minute? And in it is the Ivy Lee method. So it's basically your top priorities that you need to get done that day. In the morning, when my brain is fresh and I'm just like making eggs or toast or whatever I'm doing with my kids, getting Zaza her vitamin, (laughs) making cookie water, I have all these little things that I do with them. I'm thinking about what my priorities are of the day. And I'll write that down in my planner. So my planner's out with my pen so I can just think about my priorities in the morning. Also, this is incredible because I'm still not looking at my phone. So I'm able to really have clarity when it comes to what the priorities of the day are. I usually leave two lines blank because I want to connect with the team to see if there's something that's really important that they need me to do. So Having a priority list is key. And the Ivy Lee method is the top six priorities of the day. You, I might be flubbing this, and you start with the first one and you can't move on to the second one until you've done the first one. I feel like it was invented by Charles Schwab and I'm probably saying that wrong, but go Google it. It's amazing. And if you don't want to get the planner, you can literally just do this on a piece of paper. I just like having a planner And the one that the Skinny Confidential has is like spiraled. I really like having a spiral notebook because it lays open and it's like super thick pages and it has the prompts ready for you so you don't have to think about it. The Ivy Lee method though is going to get you really crystal clear because if you have a to-do list of 6 million things, it's impossible to know what to do first. So having a priorities list is so important. Managing your time. Leveling up is all about managing your time. I am nutty with my time. I am someone that needs to be nutty with my time or else my day will run me. I, trust me, have learned so many lessons the hard way of not being (laughs) strategic with my time. I think one of the number one hires that you should make in any business is someone to completely and utterly manage your calendar be obsessed with your calendar, be obsessed with your time. Time to me is the most important commodity. Like if I don't have my time and I don't have space, I can't create, I'm not effective. Time is just so important to me. So I try to obviously, we've talked about this before, passively multitask. So getting a blowout while you're, I don't know, doing emails, on the treadmill, taking a call. I really try to think about my time. And I do that on Sundays. So I'll look at my entire calendar. If anything is not necessary, I will take it off. If something can be done by delegation, I'll take it off. If something is not productive to the overall priority, I'll take it off. If someone can take a call for me or it doesn't require so many people on a call, I'll take it off. I'm just always looking at how I can run my time like a well-oiled machine. And Katie has really helped me with that. She's absolutely incredible with sort of running my calendar. We have a lot of systems like color coding. We have even systems for how long a call should be. I'm a fan of 15-minute calls. I'm really a fan of getting to the point. I think that if there's something that can be done over text message, I'm a fan of that. I also lately have learned even more about time and managing myself. It's constantly learning. I am not perfect at this. I've even had to tell the Skinny Confidential team, like I am learning every single day. And one of the things that I just started doing is how can I take myself off calls and have them take the calls and then have it filter through someone else? So Katie's sort of filtering my calls. She'll ask me a bunch of questions on our 15-minute touch base daily, and I'll be able to give her the answers, and she can go out and delegate everything. So I really have tried to get better at making sure that I'm not the block in the domino. And that requires a lot of thought around time. I've even tried to get better at being present. Like when I'm with Zaza in my calendar, I want to be with Zaza. I don't want to be having to post a bunch of stuff for a brand or get on social media. I really want to be present. 
So again, this is something that I work on daily. It's definitely a weakness for me, but I think really getting strict and psycho with your time. And if it's something that you know that is wasting time or you're doing it to procrastinate, I would have a really honest conversation with yourself. And how I would recommend doing that is having a deep work session about your time. Last but not least, batching. Time batching. We talk about this all the time, but it's going to help anyone level up. I batch. So I'll do a cluster of calls. I'll do like an hour of calls. I'll batch together. That way my brain is not skipping over to a million different things. So instead of, let me just do an example. Instead of me doing a 30-minute call with the Skinny Confidential team, then taking a 20-minute break to post on social media, then writing something, then editing something, then doing text messages, and then coming back to another call. My brain's all over the place, right? But if I do an hour of clustered calls while I'm getting a blowout, it's easier to focus on that. So I'll schedule my time for calls in a batch. I'll schedule podcasts in a batch. I'll schedule photo shoots in a batch. I try to theme days. I just find that when it comes to my brain switching back and forth, it's a lot easier. I am someone that, again, is not perfect at this. It's constant refinement. But time batching is absolutely amazing, even if you pair it with time blocking where you time certain tasks. So let's just say that every Tuesday, you're going to write for two hours. That's all you're going to do is write. You time that, you put your phone on airplane mode, you write for two hours, you don't do anything else. And you like theme that as your writing day. If you're going to do calls, instead of doing six calls throughout the day, do them all back to back. Now, again, I don't know if this method is like correct. This is what I have found has worked best for me. I am all about hearing how you level up. Let me know on my latest post at Lauren Bostick. I will send out three Skinny Confidential planners to you guys. And also we have a code for you if you want to use code PINKPLANNER. You get 20% off on shopskinnyconfidential.com. I hope this episode inspires anyone who's out there who has limiting beliefs about what they're capable of. I just try to open my entire brain into landscape mode and think I'm capable of anything I want. And I hope that this episode inspires anyone who's listening that they're capable of anything they want. It just requires a lot of discipline. And Jocko has an incredible quote. He says, discipline equals freedom. And all of these leveling up tips, if you really dumb it down, have to do with discipline. And it's not just discipline, it's self-discipline. And listen, you're not going to get it right all the time. But if you can get it right 80% of the time, that's pretty damn good. Let me know what you guys want to hear next on my next solo. I'm having so much fun with this little series. I think Katie's going to do a Q&A next time with me. And uh, definitely go back and listen to the Habits solo episode and my weight loss postpartum journey episode. Those are both with Katie. And I'm on a mic solo without Michael. So we have some fun. Thank you guys so much for listening. Make sure you are rating and reviewing the podcast on Apple Podcast. We're going to give away three pink and lilac skinny confidential planners. All you have to do is tell us what you want my next solo episode to be on on my latest Instagram at Lauren Bostick. And we're always in the comments and DMs writing down you guys' feedback. So please let us know.